Hello. I'm Interweb Studios and today we ask Reddit what was ducking awesome as a kid but sucks as an adult. Before I begin I want to point out that if you do enjoy the video please subscribe. The goal here lower the channel's rice purity score as my channel is currently the equivalent of a super senior virgin at a college party who has never talked to a girl. Let's get that fix and lower this number. Also, like and comment since you are like 2 inches from those 2 buttons. With that out of the way sit back and enjoy. Going to McDonald's. As a kid, it was a victory. As an adult, it's defeat and sadness. McShame. Having no job. Having no job is awesome. It's having no money that sucks. I was just thinking yesterday about a period when I was unemployed in my early 20s. I was like shit I wasn't doing anything with my life. I was unemployed for a year after college due to the pandemic. I miss the days I could just get up at 2 p.m., game all day, then go to bed at like 4 a.m. without anyone but my parents bugging me. Having a 100 bucks in your bank account. I remember in school when I was like 10 we had to write an essay on how I would spend $1,000 in a day. We all wrote about getting huge houses and fancy limos, buying all the candy in the store and throwing huge parties. The teacher must have laughed so hard. Edit for anecdote I just remembered. I was part of a Facebook group for London rental properties a few years back, as were some other internationals. This poor guy asked how much to live in London. Someone said, can be anywhere from £1,000 to £2,500, depending on which area. The guy replied, for how many years? I remember when I was 16 with my first job and my bank account hit $1,000 for the first time. I was so excited because I felt like I hit the jackpot. Now I have $1,000 in my bank account and I know it's going to be gone in a week because of bills and other expenses. I just love being an adult. Staying awake till 2 in the morning as a teen, young adult, yeah baby. The possibilities are endless. Staying awake till 2 in the morning as a 40-something, this is gonna hurt in the morning. So one of the big parts people seem to forget about staying up till 2 a.m. as a kid is, it still ducking hurts the next day. Maybe, maybe you got through the morning okay, but by evening you were half dead. Hence teenagers staying up till 4 a.m. then sleeping until noon. If staying up late didn't hurt them, they wouldn't need to sleep till noon. My birthday. It's not that I hate it, it's just that I don't care about it anymore. I occasionally forget how old I am. The other day I mentioned to my sister about being 37. She had a confused pause and the conversation went on. Turns out I'm 36. Summer. When you're a kid, it's three months of freedom from school. When you're an adult, you still have to go to work, but now it's sweltering hot and you're sweating your balls off all day, every day. This is the answer I was looking for. It's even harder if you are a working parent trying to give your kid that super awesome summer while trying to keep your job. That balance between, I want to come play at the park with you, and, I really don't want to lose my job, is hard. Completely. I hate summer now. I don't even understand why they gave us that for 12 years then took it away. Losing a tooth. Oh yes. Can you imagine running around showing your family, look. I lost a tooth. Doesn't it make me look adorable? And when you are a kid, a lost tooth makes you money. As an adult, it costs you way more than all the money the tooth fairy ever gave you. That's how the tooth fairy makes enough profit to give some back. Waking up in another place than you fell asleep. Not to get sappy, but my I used to love when my dad would carry me into my bed after falling asleep in the car or on the couch. I would wake up when he was carrying but pretend to be asleep. It was such a nice feeling. He walked out on us right after my baby brother was born. My mom become pretty jaded and emotionally distant and would just drag him into bed whenever he fell asleep because she did not feel like carrying him to bed. I used to make it a point to carry him into his crib as gently as 12-year-old me could. Hope the little dude had that feeling too despite being in a broken home. Getting mail. I remember every day begging my parents if I got mail. I had pen pals. I got so excited when something came for me. Now I dread going to the mailbox because all that will be there are bills. Sounds like you need to find more pen pals. You can just send a letter to your family. They appreciate it. Ask them to write back. Eating large quantities of candy in a single sitting. Yes. 
Still tastes great but gives me wicked heartburn. Too much sugar can give me heartburn, but the more common side effect is a headache. I've discovered I get headaches if I don't get enough sleep, don't drink enough water, or eat too much sugar. Or any combination of the three. Seriously. I could eat a bag of caramels during one movie at university. Now I eat maybe three pieces a day when I have some. I have a friend who actually eats more sweets in a week as a 37 year old adult than most kids could ever hope to consume in their whole childhoods. His heart occasionally beats irregularly, but he assures me it won't stop him. I have a new role model spinning in circles. I try to do that now while holding my little one and I do about two spins before I'm lightheaded and dizzy as a drunk. Turning my head too fast makes me dizzy and nauseated lol. Getting up from the couch makes me dizzy for duck's sake. This is an excellent comment from 7 years ago by you slash Sean Sanders about why adults get dizzy when kids don't. There are many reasons for this in general, such as lack of reflexes and fine motor skills due to aging which prevent your body from autocorrecting itself when it gets off balance. But specifically for what you're asking about, spinning while sitting, it has to do with your inner ear. When you tilt your head to the left, your body knows that your head is tilted left because it can sense it. If your eyes are open, you could sense it just by seeing that everything is not tilted. But if you close you would still feel that you were tilted. Even when you pass out and wake up never remembering having gone to sleep, as you awaken, you can sense which way you are oriented. Your body accomplishes this through the use of liquid-filled tubes inside your inner ear which stimulate nerves as the liquid levels itself with gravity. When you are young, you have more blood flow to all various parts of your body, and your inner ear sensors are healthy and plentiful. As you age, however, you start to lose sensitivity in those nerves, or sometimes lose nerves completely. This makes it so your inner ear sensor is less precise than it was when you were younger, when means when you really shake it up, like spinning in a chair it can take a little longer for it to sort itself out and figure out where you are oriented. Additionally, people can develop debris inside those liquid-filled sensors, like calcium buildup, really tiny rocks. Those end up sloshing around with the liquid as well and, as they interact with the liquid, send false signals to your brain via those nerves. In other words, people with healthy inner ear sensors will have much better balance than people with less healthy sensors. And as we age, our sensors become damaged or at least less precise. The state fair. Especially now that I have to pay for everything. My parents took us to Disney World for a week as kids. I went for four days with my husband a few years ago and wanted to go home with how expensive everything was. I went home and thanked my parents for that trip. Depending on when those two trips happened, there was likely a considerable difference in cost even after adjusting for inflation. Yep, went as a family of six for a week in 2000 and at the time it was $900. For everything. My dad wouldn't stop complaining about it so I remember the number specifically. Went by myself again in 2021 and it was thousands of dollars for just me, and I didn't get to do nearly as much stuff as we did in 2000 either. That was with me budgeting. Being an adult is having this conversation less and less frequently until you lose contact with them entirely. Hey, you doing anything for your birthday? Nah, I gotta work. Might do something that weekend, you wanna swing by? Sorry, I have to work. No worries, I understand. Sorry I couldn't get you anything, had a doctor's appointment, low on cash right now. It's fine, you know I don't expect anything. I wish we could hang out sometime. Same. Just been so busy lately, when I have a moment free from work I'm just too tired for much of anything. Yeah I feel that. Man, remember the good old days? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Gotta go. Talk to you next week? Only if I'm not dead haha. Or it's the call. Hey man, Alex's birthday is coming up and we're getting a cabin for the weekend. It's $250 a person plus food and alcohol. Saturday we're going to the casino and it's a three-hour drive north of the city. We're all taking Friday off and leaving at 9 a.m. You down? Sorry. My sister's coming into town. But really you're just too broke to go. Just the idea of a day off work to spend money makes me anxious. People coming to your house to visit and stay a few days. Seriously.
I love my friends so much but holy shit I get so anxious having to keep people entertained for more than a night. On that same note however it is great having those friends that you are close enough with to come hang out and just exist next to each other. Staying home on a sick day. As a kid it was a huge victory, got to stay in bed all day, watch TV, and having a parent tend to your every need. Then as an adult you're just thinking about the work you're gonna have to make up for and how you hope you don't need to go to a doctor. If you're really sick sure. But as an adult I sometimes just burfaced lie about being sick and then lie in bed reading and watching TV all day, and that's pretty dope. Going to the mall. I used to like browsing stores, but now I just want to get what I need and go. I mean, most malls are also depressing vistas of empty storefronts bookended by a department store on life support these days. There used to be fun things at the mall. An arcade, stores with stuff in them to look at. Now it's empty except for maybe a drugstore and a grocery store. Exactly. People complain about teens glued to their devices, but there's nowhere fun and safe for them to hang out anymore. Snow day. I either have to take vacation time or make up those hours, and I'm going to spend the whole morning shoveling my damn driveway. Before COVID my office would close for snow days but pay us anyway. Now we all have the ability to work from home so no more snow days. No pain. I could fall down, scrape my knee and cry for like one minute and then get back up and ride a bike, or play tag or whatever. Now, I fall down. I am staying down and may need life alert. I have to take Advil, put my knee up with ice, and complain to my wife how painful it is for the next week. That is if I am lucky and didn't break the whole thing. Your metabolism. Actually doesn't change much between 2060. You just move less. I believe that. I think people generally are sedentary, refuse to correct bad habits, and form new bad habits over time. That's the real reason you put on weight. I mean don't discount the major factor of work. Just walking regularly makes a big difference. The amount of time you lose that used to be even mild exercise time to commuting in a car and working in an office is massive. Then you also have chores like grocery shopping. Suddenly to go play ultimate frisbee in the park every day is a massive commitment. When as a kid or even in college it was a passive reality of simply something you did after school on your way home. With that, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment any things that I may have missed. Thank you for stick around this long and until next time.